Falkland Islands are famous for the great array of marine life. They hold two-thirds of the world population of black-browed albatross and are home to the world's largest population of gentoo penguins. But despite being a focal point for such species, there are some visitors to the islands that we still know very little about. Caroline Weir from Falklands Conservation is leading a project funded by a BEST2 grant from the EU to research an elusive and little studied marine mammal. She has been studying the proposed key biodiversity area in Barclay Sound, East Falkland, to gather data on the endangered sci whales that are using this busy port area. Using such a small boat to search for sci whales is not normally an option for researchers. Globally, the species inhabit deep offshore oceans. However, here in the Falklands, things are different. This seems to be one of the few places in the world where sci whales are occurring very close to the shore, um, which makes them accessible for study. We don't really know why they're coming to shore here as opposed to anywhere else. Um, so. This work here is fairly pioneering in terms of what we know about say whales worldwide, because in other locations we, we simply don't see them in places where they're accessible. To date, most of the research that has been done on say whales was part of the mid 20th century whaling industry when they were hunted for their oils and meat. Because of this, there is only limited data from live whales. But this work in the Falkland Islands is aiming to change that. Caroline does, however, face the same challenges that the whalers faced. The whalers realise that say whales are very unpredictable. You, you get years where there's a lot of them, and then you can go back to the same location at the same time of year in another year, and there's none. They were known to move around and be very um, to fluctuate quite a lot, um, which made it you know difficult to catch them, and also clearly now in the modern era difficult to study them. The other thing about say whales is they are very streamlined, they're a very, very slender whale and that, that makes them very fast and they were known by the whalers to be particularly fast animals. As the species has not been heavily studied in the past, Caroline is deploying as many methods as possible to collect the data that could be pivotal to the Falkland Islands management plans for say whales. The main tool in her arsenal is photo identification. You photograph each side of the dorsal fin and the flank with a high resolution camera and lens and you try and pick out features that are unique to particular individuals. Um, so this might be nicks and notches in the dorsal fin and also scarring across the side. Um, so, and then we build up a catalogue of distinctive individuals and we can use that to monitor individuals over time and look at their spatial use of the sound, their social affiliations. Um, and also a minimum number of animals using Barclay Sound over the course of the season. These photographs should make it possible to identify individual whales and to understand how they are using Barclay Sound. However, it isn't as straightforward as it seems. When we're trying to do photo identification work, ideally you want the animal to be directly parallel to you. As soon as they're at a slight angle, you start to lose the, the, the subtle differences in shape and um, nicks. Um, so we're always trying to get to manoeuvre into a position where the boat is fairly level with a whale. And it's actually really hard with say whales because they are constantly fast, they are very unpredictable in the way that they surface. Um, they tend to be on quite long dives and then they'll, they'll come up for three or four breaths and then they're gone again. In recent months we've recorded 12 minute dives off some of these whales. You know, by the time we see them come up for that first breath and start to manoeuvre the boat up, the, the time is gone really and they're already back down. While Caroline is photographing the whales, her volunteer assistant Maria Taylor also has an important job to do. 
Um, as soon as we see a blow, we head over to the whale. And Caroline takes up the um, long lens camera, trying to get some photo ID shots of the fins. And I take a voice recorder. And I record every time the whale surfaces, or whales, because it may be a small group. Um, so every time they surface, I speak that into the voice recorder. And this gives us how long they dive for, which is um, really useful information to know. If we have a whale that is close enough to the boat and seems to be opportunistic enough, we will try and take a biopsy sample from it. Um, that will be Caroline's job and then I take over doing the photo ID. It was only after careful consideration and training and under strict international ethical guidelines that the decision was made to include genetic biopsy work in this study. A small tissue sample, 7 millimetres across, has been taken from just 13 of the whales that Caroline has encountered. Sampling doesn't seem to harm the whales, and the wealth of information that can be obtained from even just a small sample is enormous. It will provide the building blocks for understanding population dynamics and global movements of this little understood marine mammal. Spotting the whales under a grey Falkland sky is difficult enough, but the researchers must also be on the lookout for other evidence of sci whales. One thing of particular interest is the faecal matter that the whales leave near the surface of the water. When this reddish plume is spotted, it is important to collect as much as possible before it sinks. Faecal sampling is a globally recognised method of investigation. It can tell us what the whales are eating in Barclay Sound. So um, this will be analysed at fisheries to look at the hard parts and then we're also going to send a sample off to um, Bass in Cambridge who are going to do some DNA analysis to see if there's anything else in here that the whales are eating. It, it is also hoped that these samples will be able to provide some genetic information about the whales that will add to that collected during the biopsy work. As this boat survey comes to a close, the long process of data analysis is only just beginning. Caroline must get the samples back to the Falklands Conservation Office to prepare them for analysis. The samples collected at sea will be sent to the UK to be analysed by the British Antarctic Survey in Cambridge. There will also be analysis of samples that local people kindly allowed Falklands Conservation to collect from their old whale bones. In the islands, the remaining samples are being investigated by Jus Pompert at the Government Fisheries Department to determine exactly what the sci whales are eating in the Falklands waters. This is quite interesting because although we probably think we know what they eat, you don't really know until you actually look. The dominant prey item seems to be lobster krill, scientific name is Munida gregaria, um, which we know to be very common, but we don't really know too much about the abundance or the or the sort of life cycle of it around the islands. We know it's very abundant because a lot of penguins feed on it and also uh, some fish species. So. Adult lobster krill can grow to about four inches long and the species is hugely important to the Falkland Islands marine ecology. Genetic analysis of the faecal samples should be able to show if there are any other species that form a significant part of the sci whale diet that just can't identify under the microscope. Back in her office, Caroline must carry on with the long task of compiling data from her boat surveys. At the end of each field day, I go through all the images that we've collected um, in the different encounters, and I'm pulling out the best images of each individual. So this is an example from the catalogue of one of the most distinctive individuals that we've encountered over the season. So we try and show both the left side of the dorsal and the right side of the dorsal and also the left and right flank. Um, we include the flank because in some of the animals that don't have big obvious nicks in the dorsal fin like this, we are relying on the scar pattern and you need to be able to see as much of the body above water um, as you can in order to see these little variations. Um, in terms of the flank, we're using the cookie cutter shark, um, the oval scar marks. Also, some of these animals vary a little bit in these pale pigmentation patterns, which is called the chevron. And also some of them have um, killer whale toothache marks um, and scars from things like that, um, which can be used over time to re-identify them. This information is shedding light on how the whales use the sound. With some only ever seen once and others being seen regularly over the course of weeks or months. It is also proving that sci whales have a flexible social life. Whales are often seen within different groups, even over the course of a single day. 
There is also other sighting data to analyse. We've been flying these aerial surveys and what we have here on the mapping software is just an example from one survey. This was actually the first one that we flew. This first survey was uh, very early in February. At this particular time, the highest density of whales was out here in the mouth. The whales were aggregated out there and we weren't really seeing much inside the sound. This changed as the season went on. At the end we'll be looking at the finer scale uh, changes in whale distribution over the course of the season and looking at whether, you know, what the management impacts would be for that in terms of, you know, vessel traffic um, and, and feeding behaviour. On the boat surveys, observational notes are linked to GPS data, allowing the precise locations of the whales to be mapped. This area in yellow is the candidate key biodiversity area that's been proposed for say and fin whales. So all of these black dots represent one minute um, on the boat. It's a one minute GPS interval. So if I take that away and, over, well, and overlap the sightings, everything in red here is the initial sighting location for um, a say whale. What we've shown here is that they are coming all the way in sort of Long Island area. Um, there is some use right uh, Johnson's Harbour in Long Island and also we're finding that there's sightings either side of the candidate key biodiversity area and what this suggests in terms of management is that this area probably should be expanded to include right up to the cliffs on both sides of Barclay Sound. This work is a pilot study, collecting starting data on which further study can be built. It is clear that this is an area that is important for side whales. However, more study will be needed to see if this association with the Falkland Islands remains strong over time, and to determine what next steps are taken to ensure a sustainable coexistence with this endangered species. <laughs>